that can't happen if you had constant real life experience with women because you'd learn that women you know yes they're beautiful and they're sexy but they're also you know they're human they they bleed and they you know they go to the bathroom and if you live with a woman you know that you know there's the times of the month there's so many messy non-sexual things about them that it makes it difficult to attach them purely on sex because that part of it will always kind of decrease over years but the fact that they can select purely on that means something has hijacked their preferences and that's why I think it all boils down to selection so they'll come to me and they'll say I'm oh please I want you to speak to my ex-wife she's such a gold digger just like the girls you described and I was like okay tell me a little bit about her oh I met her you know she used to be a webcam girl and we fell in love and um, I met her and she you know I left my wife and kids and then I gave her everything and then she's so ungrateful and I said no she knows an idiot when she sees one and she did the exact right thing I would do. I would high five her. If she's found someone dumb enough to leave his wife and kids because you showed a bit of nipple and you're half his age, you deserve everything that comes to you because the stupidity will get you nowhere in the long run. I'm, you've got no sympathy from me. Whereas if it was I chose a really good woman, we grew up together, then things that happen and it turned out to go wrong, that's a different level of empathy I have for you because you, you went in with the right intentions. But in this case, you didn't go in with the right intentions. I can't reward bad intentions with sympathy so um, I, I digress but essentially what I would say is it, it's caused them to completely annihilate good selection when it comes to selecting a partner and therefore the family unit is now breaking down going back to the selection process and what pornography is doing to it yeah um, are you saying that it's it is um, a stimuli that is coming to somebody as their brain is developing mm -hmm. it creates a hyper I mean, not to get too fancy here, but a hyper dopaminergic feedback mm -hmm. loop yeah. where it they're now associating yeah. um, all of their female focused pleasure mm -hmm. around the sexual aspect of a yeah, woman. Exactly. They have uh, only one definition of intimacy left, which is sexual. They don't understand that there's pleasure associated with having a woman that's going to be there when you're in hospital, with, ready with some grapes. Or there's a woman, you know, that's going to be home to watch Judge Judy uh, before bed. They're replacing that form of intimacy with only one definition of intimacy. Who arouses me the best? Who can? Who stimulates me the most? They don't actually their arousal comes purely from one form of intimacy and they ignore the importance of emotional, intellectual and spiritual intimacy entirely. And I understand why, because what the porn does is just like kind of get their senses in a chokehold. So it's difficult to imagine how nice it is to have a wife that you can walk to the shops with and you have nice conversations on the way back when you think I can have this beautiful, you know, supermodel um, talk to me in any language and take her clothes off. They're like, oh, it's an obvious thing. Like, But to worship the vagina over intimacy just seems like how can we respect men in this generation if this is what they're doing and this is what they're paying for and they'll deny it every single one of them are like we don't do that we don't do that then why are there billions and billions of streams of pornography why is every only fan creator makes more money than most women on this planet I am a, I can say this in a very privileged position I am a content creator I no man is ever messaging me saying here's ten thousand dollars thank you so much you've helped me but if I had pictures of my feet online, I would get that all day, every day. So let's pre let's just take away the pretense that that doesn't happen. It does happen. How do we get rid of it rather than pretending it doesn't exist? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I this feel I feel like I'm angry today. Am I angry? Am I giving angry vibes? It, you're not get, giving angry vibes at all. <laughs> but I, what I did write as I'm it, taking notes here is you're getting jaded. I am. And so it's I, I, very I, accurate word. And you've probably seen a com complete change from last time you spoke yeah. to me. Last time I spoke, you spoke to me, and anybody who spoke to me a year ago would have said it's so refreshing to see an advocate for men coming in a female form because mm. I am, that, that is genuinely my intention. I have a wonderful partner, I have a wonderful father, I have a wonderful, like, men in my life. I've always had great relationships, but I forgot that I have high quality men mm. in my life. They have a completely different perspective of women. When you speak to the majority of men, what's caused me to become jaded is I realize that they come to me again and again that they've been hurt and naturally before I'd be on their side like what is she like a sister almost like a mm. sister I'd be like, what has she done to you and then every time I trace it back I'm like why were you so obsessed with her oh it always comes back to the sex 
and they risk everything for it. So now I'm just like, you know, they'll come to me and they'll say, look, I think I've got an anxious attachment. I think I've got this anxiety. I can't stop thinking about this one girl. Da, da. And I'll say to her, was she the best sex you had? Yeah, but that's not why I loved her. I was like, tell me something else you liked about her. <laughs> well, she was quite rude and she never used to answer my calls. I was like, that's what, that's what it is. Okay, bye. And that's what the phone call looks like now. That Isn't is... that terrible? Uh, it's indicative of the moment that we're in. It may though be overly indicative of you as a therapist that yeah. is helping people through these in problems. The tiny yeah, so you're, there's a selection bias here yeah, where there are the complete, people yeah. that fit that profile are mm -hmm. gonna come to you, especially because you really did make a name for yourself as like, hey guys, I understand you. I understand Complete. how we've ended up in this situation. Yeah, um, and that was really my intention. It really was, and I, and I remember constantly saying to women, why don't you cook for your husband? It's such a joy in cooking for your husband. And why don't you just, why does it make you feel happy when you iron his clothes and you know he's got work? And why doesn't it make you feel good? And I would realize that I'm always giving that advice, but I didn't realize that the root for the appreciation has to come sexual first. Mm. And I've learned that over the year is you can do all of that but until there that part is not tapped in because I've met some very good women who have said to me but I do all of this and he would vouch for it that I do everything but he just says to me he can't be sexually loyal he just Ooh. says to me he can't I don't know why I'm shocked by that yeah I've heard that before <laughs> yeah but it's still scandalous to me yeah I can't be sexually loyal yeah. uh okay that is um that is but they thing. can be loyal in the sense that they'll stay with you forever but they want her to believe that this is just mm -hmm. how men are designed. And I don't It is how men are designed. Yeah.